All right, so today we're going to be looking at activity 24. We're going to look at chords, secants, and tangents of a circle. So we are combining all of activity 24 in this one lesson because of the fact that we are so behind due to starting late due to COVID, and we want to hit some of the high points from this activity. So the book goes into a lot more detail with each of these lessons because it's been several days on these concepts. And we're just gonna touch on some of the high points so that you kind of get a little bit of each of them. So starting off with the chords theorem. If you have a line that goes from one side of the circle to the other, that's a chord. It can go through the center, but it doesn't have to. So a diameter is a chord, but it doesn't have to be a diameter to be considered a chord. We looked at that back at the beginning of the year, what a chord is defined to be. So if you have two chords that intersect in a circle, the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is going to equal the product of the segments of the other. So, what that's saying, take one of your chords. So here is one of my chords. Each part is A and B. And so we're going to multiply A times B. And that is going to equal the parts of the other chord, which are C and D. So one chord, the parts of it multiplied together, equal the parts of the other chord. The reason I'm going to briefly explain it, your book actually does a formal proof. If you create triangles here, these triangles are similar. These angles are congruent, these angles are congruent, and then these angles are also congruent. So angle-angle similarity is what tells you that you have similar triangles. And so this side and this side are proportional, C over B to A over D. And then if you cross multiply, you have the AB and CD. So that's where it comes from. If you're more interested in that, you can look in your book and it goes through the proof there. So let's look at this one. First off, pick a chord. So I'm gonna start with this chord. The parts of that chord are the 21 and the x. So 21 times x. Then the other chord has parts 15 and 14. So we're going to say 15 times 14. So 21 times x is just 21x. 15 times 14 is 210. And so then if you divide by 21, x is 10. Looking at the next one, one chord and the other chord. So we have 12 times x equals 8 times 9. So 12x equals 72, and so x is 6. So that's when you have two chords that intersect in your circle. Now we're going to look at a secant. So a secant, if you have a circle, it is basically just a line that goes through your circle. This part is a chord. So it's basically a chord that keeps going. So if you have two secants that are drawn to a circle from the same external point, so they both start here, the product of the length of one secant segment and its external part is equal to the product of the length of the other secant segment and its external part. So A is our exterior or our external part. And then B is the entire line segment. So that's where A times B comes in. So I have exterior times the whole, or if you want to call it external times the whole. And then on the other secant segment, this is the external or the exterior, C, and then the whole thing is D. And so C times D, or exterior times the whole. So if you want to think of it as exterior times the whole, or the external times the whole, same basic concept. So let's look at this example. If you look at the one on the left, the secant on the left, the external part is the six. The whole thing, what is the whole length of that segment? That's what's going to go in your parentheses here. And I want you to think about it for a second. See if you can figure out what it is. I'm going to come back to it. If you look at the other secant, the external part is 7. 
And the whole thing, this whole thing, seven, and then what do we do with the 11? We add them together. And if you wanna go ahead and write that that is 18, you can. So coming back to what goes in this parentheses over here, six and X, they're gonna say six plus X. You're gonna add them together. You're not gonna multiply. So then we have six times six plus X equals seven times 18. The external part times the whole thing. The exterior part times the whole thing. So distribute, six times six is 36, six times x is six x. And then that's gonna equal 126. So then you subtract your 36, so six x equals 90, and divide by six to get that x is 15. Now let's look at the other example. See if you can set up the equation. So pause the video for a second and see what you get. This is one secant, so I have eight times eight plus x. And then on this one, I have seven is the external part times seven plus 17. So I'm writing this out as seven plus 17. You don't have to. If you wanna go ahead and add them together and just start with this equation, you can. So then when you distribute 64 plus eight x equals 168. So then 8x equals 104, and then divide by 8 to get 13. So there is how you would deal with secants. So now we're going to look at secants and tangent together. So this is not our trig ratio that we just used. It's a different type of figure, different than what we just looked at in the previous trig ratios. If you have a circle, a tangent line touches the circle at one point. So a secant just goes through the circle. A tangent line touches a circle at one place. So if you have a secant and a tangent and they're drawn from the same external point, the product of the length of the secant segment and its external part, which is exactly what we just did up here. So the external part is B and the whole thing is A. So I have A times B. It's going to equal the square of the length of the tangent segment. So the tangent segment is right here. So that length is C. And so that's why we have C squared. If you look, it is still basically exterior times whole. The exterior is the C and the whole thing is C because all of this one is on the outside of the circle. And so basically it's just your exterior squared. But if you want to think of it as exterior times whole equals exterior times whole, you can. It just ends up that your exterior and your whole are identical on these. So let's look at two examples. Here is our secant. The exterior part is 18. And then the whole thing, you add those together, 18 plus X. Then on the tangent, this is the exterior and it's the whole thing. So 30 times 30 or 30 squared. Then you distribute 324 plus 18X equals 900. So 18X equals 576. And so X is 32. Now looking at the next example. Again, I'm going to start with my secant. Here is my secant. The exterior part is 4, and the entire, you add them together, 4 plus x. Then the exterior part and the whole thing are both 6 on my tangent, so I'll write 6 squared. So then I distribute 16 plus 4x equals 36. So then 4x equals 20, and then x would be 5. So hopefully that helps you with understanding how chord, secant, tangents intersect and how you solve for missing parts on those.